Hey, I'm Scott. I'm a transport nurse in Chicago. I'm the founder of Pediatrics. And more importantly, from this perspective, was I happily retook and more importantly passed the CPEN exam just a couple of months ago. So with that in mind, what I really want to just chat with y'all about is just simply what's new with the test. The CPEN exam, as many of y'all know, was most recently updated in March of 2018. And with the announcement of that, we started to get lots and lots of emails and phone calls because people actually heard that indeed this was coming and their natural instinct was simply something like this. So with that in mind, as we'll keep coming back to throughout this short CPEN update, most importantly, if you're going to go ahead and take your CPEN either for the first time, or if you're going to recertify with it, most importantly, what you need to remember comes directly from the BCEN. And remember, BCEN is the Board of Certification for Emergency Nursing. That's people who actually go ahead and administer the test. And from their website, when they quote, the overwhelming content of the CPEN exam remains the same. That's important. The vast majority of stuff, both pre and post March of 2018, remains the same. So with that, if you're going to go ahead and take the test, what about qualifications? We're not worthy! We're not worthy! We're not worthy! When you actually look at the BCEN website, what they say is really there's two different qualifications that you ought to have, either of which are absolutely fine. But what they say is, number one, you can work full-time as an emergency nurse in a pediatric emergency setting for at least six months which means they're saying that at a minimum, you should work only with sick kids for six months so that you've got a fair amount of experience when it comes to taking care of actually really sick and not so sick kids. However, for everybody else who doesn't work at big, we only take care of kids hospital, they also say that you could be a full-time employee as an emergency nurse in a mixed age emergency setting for two years. So they're saying, number one, you can work at a dedicated PZR for six months. Or you can work in a we see everything that hits the door emergency room for two years. Either way, as you can imagine, they just want you to have a baseline comfort and knowledge base when it comes to taking care of sick kids. Now, when you look at statistics, you can do it. What you need to remember is a couple things. Just as before, you've got three hours to go ahead once you start to take the test. And just as before, it's 175 questions. Now, 150 of them are actually graded. 25 of them, you remember, are their test questions, meaning that they're trying to figure out if they're actually a good test question or not a test question. Now, it would be really nice if, of course, they said these are the test questions we're actually gonna test you on, and these are the ones that we're only figuring out, but that's not life. So either way, you've got three hours to go ahead and take these 175 questions. And when it comes to passing, you need to get 75% to pass. So with that in mind, what's kind of neat is if you look again at statistics, the most recent stats come from 2017 and they found that there was 866 people across the world who actually sat for the CPEN exam. So if you look at the 866 people who actually sat for CPEN, happily 75% of them went ahead and passed it successfully on their first time. Why that's kind of neat is if you look and say, well, you know what, 75% passing the first time is actually not that great. Interestingly, the pass rate for CPEN or the pediatric ER exam is actually a whole lot better than the adult exam. If you look at this CEN or the big people certified ER exam, they actually on the first time only have a 61% chance. Meaning from that perspective, if you're going to take a test, if you're comfortable with kids, go for CPEN because you've actually got a better chance of happily passing it the first time. What about money? Moral of the story is simple. The test is not cheap. Let's get that out of the way right now. So to take the test, they give you two different prices that you can choose from. You have $230 if you are a member of ENA, or it's $370 to go ahead and take the test if you're not a member of ENA. Now, why that's actually kind of smart from their perspective is it's $120 if you want to join ENA. Meaning, if you go ahead and actually join the ENA group, you actually can take the test and you save $20 than if you didn't go ahead and join ENA. 
Now, when it comes to recertification, just like TNCC, just like ENPC, if you're going to go ahead and recertify, it's an every four year process. And you have two different ways that you can choose to recertify. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. So again, you have two different ways that you can go ahead and recertify every four years. And it really is just simply up to you and your preference as to how you like to recertify. First choice, as you can imagine, is you can retake the test every four years, but most people say, why would you possibly do that? Which means there's got to be a better way. So with that, you can recertify either A, by taking the test, or B, you can recertify happily, just like you can with big people CEN via CEUs. And when you look at the website, they tell you you can recertify a couple different ways. The first of which is you can get 100 CEUs every four years, which breaks down pretty much to 25 CEUs every year. Or with that same idea, they also say that if you have a thousand hours of clinical practice, meaning for lack of a better term, during that period of time you work as a nurse, you can go ahead and list those hours and only have to get 40 CEUs in four years, otherwise known as happily only 10 hours of CEUs per year. Now, you don't actually have to submit the CEUs. It's purely an honor system. You have to click on the screen and say, yes, I actually have done the clinical practice and or the CEUs that are required. But more of the story is you really ought to keep a copy because they'll be very clear on the website saying that after you go ahead and recertify with this option, that you've got a 10% chance of being audited. So just simply when you do your CEUs, just save it because why be stressed if you don't need to. Now, do all the CEUs have to be focused on pediatrics? How about new? Again, the website is very clear and it specifically says that CE should have a clear and direct application to the practice of emergency pediatric emergency, flight slash transport, or trauma nursing. Which is a really nice way of saying that as long as it's somehow emergency focused, whether it's pediatric or big people or transport or some variation thereof, then you can go ahead and use those hours happily for recertification. They don't have to be 100% just focused on children. Now, can you use the same CEUs for CPEN and for CEN or big people renewal in the same process. Yes! 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 I'll have what she's having. Can you use the same CEUs? And happily, as Meg so wonderfully illustrated, the answer is yes. And why that's huge is think about it. If you have to have 100 hours for CEN plus 100 hours for CPEN, literally, you never have a chance to be working as a nurse. You'd be nothing but going to CEUs. You'd be totally wicked smart. But you'd never actually be able to actually work as a nurse because you'd always be in con ed. So happily, you can go ahead and use the same CEUs for both. So since the test was updated, again, March 18th of 2018, as we keep coming back to, the overwhelming content remains the same. So a couple key updates that come directly from their website. First of which is they state, quote, sexual orientation and gender identity have been added to the updated CPEN content outline, which is a nice way of saying really what they're pushing is at triage. The key phrase they now want you to remember is how would you like to be addressed? That just simply takes that whole gender identity issue out of the equation. The second of which is with the recent update, they say the technical skills are no longer a focus on the updated content outline meaning they're getting away from skills and more on actual clinical assessment and care. So there's five categories that now make up the test, and that's triage, medical, more medical, special considerations, and trauma. And triage, really what it comes down to is you have 31 questions as they pertain to triage. And I highly, highly recommend, because I remember this when I first took the CPEN many years ago, and then again, when I happily recertified just a couple of months ago, I highly recommend, can you notice a trend? I cannot recommend enough that you read two things before the night of the test. Number one, make sure you read the ENPC chapter on triage. And also when you're reading ENPC, because it's crucial, 
you can't just take NPC and expect to take the test. It's just not going to happen. There's lots of materials and review courses, etc., out there to help you actually pass the CPEN exam. But ENPC is a huge portion of questions that are on the test. So number one, make sure you read the ENPC triage chapter. And also, straight out of the ENPC book, I highly recommend you take a look at the part about growth and development. For many of us, it's been a really long time since we thought about what a six-month-old ought to be able to do versus what a nine-month-old ought to be able to do versus what a three-year-old ought to be able to do. And are they at what stage of dependency, Maslow, that whole thing you vaguely remember from nursing school? More to story, read through the book the night before. Just have a basic idea as to what little kids ought to be doing when. And you'll have a much better chance of passing the 31 questions as they pertain to triage. When it comes to medical, that's bread and butter. That's respiratory, cardiac, neuro. And there's 32 questions on medical. There's 35 questions on everything else as they pertain to medical. Special is what they now describe as neonatal, behavioral, and environmental. There's 27 questions for that. And lastly, when it comes to trauma, there's 25 questions as they pertain to trauma. But most importantly, are you noticing a trend? The overwhelming content of the exam remains the same. So the moral of the story as we finish this quick update as to what's new with the CPEN exam. The military, if you remember, has their motto. And the military motto is simply best described as the six P's. It is proper planning prevents piss poor performance. However, when it comes to us here in pediatrics, our six P's are slightly different. Whereas our version of the six P's is reasonably simple, and that's called proper planning prevents piss poor pediatrics. Thank y'all very much. If there's anything I can do, just simply just call our office or shoot me an email, and I'm more than happy to help in your process of hopefully going ahead and passing the CPEN exam. Elvis has left the building.